this is Luis Velasquez, and today's date is uh, November 9th, 2023. I'm going to do a test. I'm going to do the following things. First, I've applied an acrylic ground on wood panel. It's bright orange. And then the next thing I'll do, a, uh, I'll create milk oil paint. So easy to make. But I'm going to use this for an underdrawing. Now, if you haven't seen my videos on milk oil paint, the glaze is dry in five minutes. Uh, the impasto dries in one hour. And once that's done, I'm going to apply a pure oil sealant to protect the milk that's in the, uh, in the mixture. Right after that, I'm going to oil out with uh, CGM oil out medium, that wonderful, wonderful medium. That's part of the CGM procedure, technique, method, technology, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to begin to paint the final painting with CGM oil paint. And I'm going to start this with a charcoal drawing, and it's not going to have any fixative. The reason I do this is because I love to draw in charcoal. You can just see how easy it is to erase, and it's how it's so easy just to to change. You know, uh, on top of this charcoal drawing, I'm going to begin with the uh, the milk oil paint. And then I'll begin with the actual procedure that I've outlined here and uh, go from there. I will restate what I've already written, which is uh, CSO emulsions method, the original one that I created starting in 1988, is impeccable. It's the greatest one for painting like Van Eyck with microfine details. However, if you want to paint like uh, Van Dyke, or like uh, Van Gogh, Monet, Monet, Renoir, and many of the painters that painted with a full brush like Rubens and Howells, then the CGM method is going to be the one you're going to want. Okay, I will stop this video and start soon. Uh, please see my YouTube videos on making and using milk oil paint. It's really a wonderful technology that I created many, many years ago. You need two things, not that dry milk, which the old masters and even the modern masters never even knew about. And then you've got the fat-free milk, which has been here for thousands and thousands of years. It's just milk that they removed all the butter fat. You cannot use canned milk. It has palm oil. And you cannot use reduced fat milk. And you cannot use whole milk because none of those would dry. But non-fat dry milk mixed together with uh, fat-free milk, as I put right here, uh, will dry. And now it's easy to make. I'm just going to stop the video for a minute while I mix this. There are no rules, really, to measurements. It's You just mix enough milk and enough dry milk until you create a stand-up condition and you call this milk gel, milk gel. This is too watery. You can see it's too watery. I added more drying on fat milk. I need to be, I need for it to be a stand-up condition. Not watery at all. Now this is getting to be more like it. I'm gonna put it right here on this palette. Yeah, I put it there. I'm going to put it here on the palette and get rid of this paper thing. I'm going to get rid of that. And then I'm going to get my palette knife and I'm going, to, I'm going to grind it just a little bit more. Mixing is different from grinding. Grinding is where you really put pressure on your knife. Okay, getting close. You see how it stands up? You see how you don't see any loose milk anywhere? At least you shouldn't be. And if it's, that's still too watery, I can tell already it's too watery. I'm going to add some more dry milk to it. Okay, let me just get some of this here off to the side, little by little. Now you can start to see the difference here between this and this watery thing over here. All right, there's that dry stuff right there. Get back to this. I'm going to grind it for just a minute. 
So now I've been grinding and now this is the, the milk gel. See how it stands up? Okay, that's exactly what we wanted to do. We're going to mix this with our oil paints, tube oil paints, um, possibly 50-50. Okay, see how it stood up? Okay, this doesn't stand up. This doesn't stand up. This does. All right, let me get my tip for this uh, little test here. I'm going to 50% of raw umber and 50% of the milk oil paint. You'll see that 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 white milk oil paint did nothing to the intensity. Okay, now, if it's, once you've made the milk oil paint, you can do a number of things. I'll show you. I'll divide this in half. If you wanted to make it even thicker than this, you would get some more dry non-fat milk. And you would hope to increase the, the body. That's if you wanted to do that for whatever reason you might creatively think about doing that. Just add dry non-fat milk. Now, those of you who wish to use a thinner paint, I'll show you. So I poured some non-fat milk. Once you've made the mixture of the milk gel with the tube oil paint, you can add, only then can you add milk to make thinner washes like I'm doing here. Now there's a whole video on that if you want to look at it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and paint. I'm going to show you that, and then I'm going to finish it so I don't hold you up. Okay, that just took me like two minutes. And uh, now, the washes in milk oil paint dry within five minutes. But since I did this with such a hurry, I am going to remove any puddling so that I can go on to my next step. Otherwise, I have to wait for those puddles to dry. I don't want that to happen, holding you up. Okay, so there you are. You remove the puddles. I wouldn't be that careless normally. Oh, uh, I'm still waiting for the five minutes to go up. You can already see. It hasn't even been five minutes. Now I'm ready. I can do that. There's really not much of any distortion. In the meanwhile, look at this one video. It's called uh, Blask was a safe oil painting for beginners and school art teachers. This is probably the best of the three where I explain the, uh, the milk oil paint. And there's two other videos on YouTube where I paint with milk oil paint. I paint two portraits. So you look at those and we'll go from there. Me again, uh, for those that have followed from the beginning, the evolution of CGM, the GPM, which is glare mixed with dry pigment, the glare paint medium was glare and dry pigment powder. Now, I have added to that um, a teaspoon of calcium carbonate. The reason is when you overlay the, the clear oil, the calcium carbonate will help absorb the oil to make the GPM a stronger film, which I at this point believe you can actually paint on canvas. However, we've been in this particular testing, we're going to be painting with milk oil paint. And right here, I just barely a few minutes ago, five minutes ago, I painted that with the recipe I gave you. Thank you. The milk oil paint being thin dried in less than five minutes and now I'm going to uh, apply the uh, the sealant to it to make sure that it's protected from any action of uh, emulsions or whatever. 
cheesecloth to apply it. You can see that it's there. And then I'm just going to let that dry for a bit. And then I'm going to uh, apply my oil out with, with the fabulous CGM oil out medium. So this is the recipe for the updated GPM, glare paint medium. And here you see the mixtures that I'm going to put together. You'll notice that it is uh, a very soupy mixture. And I've already said that the reason I upgraded the recipe to include glare, I mean uh, calcium carbonase, is so that when you put the sealing coat, the calcium carbonate will absorb the oil, making it a more flexible medium. Thank you. So I'm ready to use this uh, fabulous CGM oil out. I'll use a piece of cheesecloth and I'm going to go over and very important anytime you do an oil out wipe it off. All you need is the smallest film. Okay, I'm ready to paint. Um, I'm ready to paint. I'm only going to use these two colors, yellow. And I just use the CGM oil out medium. It's truly wonderful. Once you try it, you'll never go back, especially if you work on large paintings. That concludes the video. Thank you very much. I hope that, uh, that it has been helpful to all of you. Thank you.